Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Laura Erickson, moments away, but first, Rise Gardens, Holly. Rise Gardens is a revolutionary hydroponic gardening system for your home. Instead of food traveling hundreds or even over a thousand miles before it hits your plate, harvest the veggies, herbs, and greens you need for dinner tonight in the comfort of your home. No green thumb required knowledge. Gardening made easy with the Rise Gardens app. Step-by-step guidance from seed to harvest. A complete garden on a shelf. And it comes with everything you need to grow healthy and the freshest food for you and your loved ones. Fully customize your garden to your needs and preferences. For more information to get your Rise Garden, visit risegardens.com. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Laura Erickson has been a scientist, teacher, writer, licensed wildlife rehabilitator, blogger, public speaker, photographer, American Robin and whooping crane expert. She's written 13 books on birds and is the recipient of the American Horticultural Society's Book Award for 2023 for her book on 100 Plants to Feed the Birds. Welcome to the program, Laura. Hi, thank you so much. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to educate not only Holly and myself and all of our listeners. And I'll start with this. Many people discover birding as a hobby later on in life. How did you get into the uh, fascinating world of birds and bird watching? I loved birds since I was a very small child. Many of my earliest memories are of looking at pigeons. I became a birder as an adult. When I was 23, my husband told his mom to buy me binoculars and a field guide for Christmas, and I instantly became addicted. Hmm. Uh, I mean, we we enjoy birds and looking at birds. I find, you know, you you got the robins and the orioles and the, the all these other ones. I think the owls are very fascinating to me. They are. I lived with an owl named Archimedes, a tiny little eastern screech owl, for 17 years. And um, I can affirm that they are indeed fascinating. He was an education bird that I was licensed to keep to take to school programs and other venues. And he reminded me in many ways of a cat. He could be active in the daytime or the nighttime. He had very cat-like eyes, and he was just a delight. That's so neat. So many gardeners are often, you know, they don't want birds in their garden. They think that they're going to pick up the tomatoes or eat their berries or whatever. How are birds helpful to the garden? Well, When we grew tomatoes here in Duluth, Minnesota, um, many times slugs go after them, too. And common grackles love eating slugs. There are a lot of interactions between birds and our fruits that we would just as soon not have to deal with. But they eat a host of insect pests that cause even more damage to plants. And they bring so much music and color. And uh, they're such an integral part of nature that, you know, recent studies have shown that people benefit both in uh, their physical health and their mental health from hearing bird song. So there's just all kinds of good reasons to want birds around, even if you do have to provide some protection to your plants to keep the birds from eating the things you want, like your tomatoes. And I'm going to assume, with an, as an expert in, in your field, you doing this so long, your eyes closed, you can identify what bird it is based on the tone of their song or their noise. Uh, Yes, but nowadays, just about anybody can do this. If you have uh, um, an app called Merlin, when you turn that app on, it's free from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. If you just do a Google search on Merlin app and bird song, you'll find it, and it's free. And if you just turn it on when you're hearing a bird, it will list 
every bird singing. And if a robin is singing and then it hears a red-winged blackbird and then it hears an oriole and the robin starts up again, the, uh, that robin will be highlighted again. So as each bird enters, even if it's already listed, it, it'll highlight it again so you can learn which is which and the sounds you're hearing. A very unique way technology can benefit us in a positive way. Right. It's kind of fascinating when you live in a uh, with all the, the things you're paying attention to being the lowest tech things of all, birds, and uh, you get so much benefit from high tech for learning about them. Definitely. Um, so your book, 100 Plants to Feed Birds, just won the American Horticultural Society's Book Award. Please tell us. You can tell us about maybe why it won the award or something that would pique the interest of our listeners um, to go pick up a copy. And also, what book of yours would you recommend to a newer bird watcher? Uh, well, like I said, when we're thinking about our yards, both our gardens per se, not so much those because things like tomatoes, our cherry trees, um, some of the flowers we like to grow aren't native. They're not part of the local natural environment, even though they're so beautiful or tasty and essential to us. But many of the just background plants in our yards, the trees and shrubs that we have, can play a really important role in our neighborhood becoming more of what it needs to be to have the birds from our part of wherever we live um, make comebacks. We've lost so many natural insects and uh, natural birds to uh, so much development. And when we're making, you know, like I in my yard, I have box elder trees. And those are like waving a red flag up in the sky. Eat it, Laura's, because they ha uh, when they have box elder seeds, if evening growth speaks are flying over, they zip down to eat my box elder seeds. Uh, different plants that we have, um, my service berry or June berry shrubs bring in cedar wax wings, bring in robins. Uh, many kinds of fruit eaters come to them. Cedar wax wings come for in spring, the day the cherry blossoms and apple blossoms open up because they eat some of the petals. They don't pig out and wipe out all the petals on your tree, but they just add so much beauty. Now, I, and go ahead. Uh, but all the natural plants we have and the plants that support birds bring in so much magic to our yards beyond when we're digging in the dirt. It's kind of nice to look up and see something vivid like an oriole. Um, bird, and I think you touched on this, most gardeners understand how to drink, bring pollinators into their garden. Uh, I'm assuming by incorporating native plants, you can attract the birds just like you described, in addition to bird feeders and bird baths. Exactly. And certain plants are really important. There's like tight relationships between certain birds and very specific plants. Hummingbirds will just show up like magic during their migration. If you have bee balm, cardinal flower, or jewelweed, as the babies are, as the males are no longer necessary for their family life because they don't, um, they don't pay attention to their babies. Uh, Ruby-throated hummingbirds, when they start migrating first in July. That's right when some of these flowers are opening up and you can just see the most beautiful flowers, uh, flower hummingbird interactions. If you have bee balm or jewelweed, some plants are just very specific to birds. Many of the composite 
plants, draw goldfinches, indigo buntings, and other very colorful or pretty little seed-eating birds. There's oak trees provide acorns. We all know about that, which are essential for blue jays. Florida scrub jays are very dependent on uh, scrub oak down in Florida. Each kind of plant can have some very tight relationships with birds, but also oak trees long before they're producing any acorns at all. Every spring, as their buds open up, tiny native caterpillars emerge, which are one of the essential foods for colorful warblers and scarlet tanagers as they're migrating through. So it's um, really nice to provide plants thinking about what birds could come to them so you're aware of the interplays. Now, for people who are bringing, uh, creating a native environment, bird feed, bird bath, what is your recommendation about bird houses? Do you advise them, advise not to do that in their backyard? What is, what is, your, what is your advice on that? Bird houses are very tricky. If they have a perch on them sticking out, like little front porch for birds, that actually makes them um, very likely to attract house sparrows. And those all are not a native bird. They cause a lot of problems for native birds, and they don't need subsidized housing. If you live in a place with bluebirds or tree swallows and can monitor it, those make wonderful uh, additions on a fence line, say. Uh, chickadee houses can be a little tricky because you have to know enough about what house wrens like to put the chickadee house where the house wrens are not likely to want it. Otherwise, the house wren male will take over every little crevice on his territory that might seem pretty to a female, and he will actually puncture all the chickadee nests uh, eggs to take over that nest box. So providing nest boxes is trickier than a lot of things. That's where they're going to be raising their babies, and the, the birds using it are very vulnerable, and we need to make sure we're doing it right. The Cornell Lab of Ornithology has a really good website um, that helps uh, with monitoring birdhouses. If you just go to Cor um, Cornell's All About Birds, you can look up different birds that you might want to attract, and you'll get all kinds of helpful information about the safest ways to do it. Fantastic. So we've really enjoyed having you on the program, Laura, um, and your great information. How can people find out more about you? I know you mentioned the, the Cornell Ornithology Department, but how can people find more about you and your books and your great information? My website is simply lauraerickson.com, and it's got a host of stuff about birds, how to help them, and lots and lots of pictures and recordings. Well, Laura, we greatly appreciate the very important and wonderful knowledge you've shared with all of us about birds and what to do and what not to do that we thought we were helping birds by like putting birdhouses and nesting boxes in our yard. Now we know that uh, we need to be more cautious about that, and we appreciate that information. Thank you for it. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And for more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.